Very good evening ladies and gentlemen as we welcome you all to the city of joy once again or maybe to be precise on the suburbs of city of joy as Morbidan Sporting Club returns to action alongside an experienced war horse Shillong Lajong FC two teams who are very well versed with the history of I league that was previously known as NFL or National Football League that's the dressing room of uh, Mohammedan FC of course uh, they will try to showcase their flair once again big names in the lineup the likes of Kasimov the likes of Samuel and that's their team bus finally arriving to once again surprise us all we had a word with their coach as well and Rishan Shov who's been a central figure on the sidelines we'll quickly have a look at uh, what he had to say ahead of Mohammedan's second fixture in the game in the tournament the second uh, match in uh, this uh, i liga uh, we want to win this uh, game because we started uh, very well for uh, with um, one uh, very important uh, winning in first i liga match uh, this season and we want to continue to play uh, like that we need to show our good football because uh, uh, we know today more uh, supporters uh, come uh, for our uh, match and they want to see a uh, good result from us and also they want to see nice football from uh, us and we try to do this uh, today evening. And that is what the dressing room of Shillong Lajong FC looks like. Dress in their signature whites, definitely the big name in the lineup is that of Gonzalez. That's their team bus which was captured earlier arriving to the stadium. Their coach Bobby Lingdo Nongbet is also a very familiar name with Indian football. He had his pearls of wisdom to share and we'll quickly listen to what Bobby said ahead of this crucial fixture for both the sides. It's a very uh, tough match against uh, Mormon Sporting. They are in form. They won uh, the first match. So we have to make a mark and uh, I believe that we have to work very hard to get these important three points. <coughs> That's a glimpse at uh, the practice for both the teams. They've had a busy day so far. We had our day started with an enthralling encounter that Samad captained the side in the last game and will once again be donning the captain's armbands. Starting 11 for Mormon Sporting, the likes of Kasimov, the likes of Samad Ali Malik will of course go a long way in defining the team's shape and stature. Formation of 4-3-3 with Kasimov being the central midfielder. And Prince once again shouldered with the responsibility of spearheading the attacking unit of Mormon and Sporting. For Shillong Lajong, though, it has been quite a roller coaster journey. There were occasions when Shillong were on the cusp of penning history. That's the starting 11 Bishal Lama, Ronnie, Kensai Lang, Damait, Takuto, Hadi, Buam, Karim Samb, Gonzalez, Allen. Definitely the likes of Gonzalez and Renan Polino will play a crucial role in paving the structure or the structural and integrity of Shillong Lajong. Both the teams will have a lot to look forward to. Talking about the bench strength as well for Mohammedan Sporting, the likes of Mohammed Shah, the likes of David Hamar, one of their most prolific young sensations, Eddie Gabriel Hernandez. That's the match officials. Anand Rana being the referee. Assistant referees are Subrat Purohit and Pradipta Kumar Nayak, fourth of Yish official, being Ajay Krishnan. We now await the two teams to walk out into the center. Mohammedan played their last fixture on last Sunday evening. 
It was an enthralling battle that took them quite a while and some hard work to eventually win the bragging rights by the barest of margins. And as the player walks into the stands, we welcome them with the intentions of another thrilling swashbuckler while I welcome my co-commentator with a very big smile on my face and his as well, Liam Bain. Welcome back, Liam, and a very good evening to you. Thank you so much, Rohit. And thank you to all the watchers and the fans and the supporters for tuning in. And good evening to everyone as we take the mic on for this second encounter of the day, which should be an absolute cracker. Shillong Lajong finally back into the I-League. They had quite a few seasons where they really did well. And this time round, it will be about doing exactly the same versus a Mohammedan sporting side who started off quite well versus Azol in the last game. The excitement levels are definitely very high as we see Shillong Lajong for the first time this season. We've had quite a few teams who have come back into the I-League, quite a few of them who have played in the I-League for the first time. So it will be interesting to see how they line up, what they can go about. And of course, it is always an occasion when football is played in Calcutta, in and around Calcutta. And it is exactly the same thing today at Nahati as Mohammedan Sporting line up for what should be a very important test for them versus Shillong Lajong. There is Samuel who scored in the first game. Alexis had a superb game for them. Their number 10 as well. And Rohit, what do you expect from Shillong Lajong coming into this fixture? Talking about uh, their earlier history, talking about the kind of mindset that has been consistent for Shillong Lajong over the years, despite all the lows in their antiquity, it is their hunger, it is their love for football that drives them to the ground. And believe me or not, if one thing that has been very persistent with them is their ability, is their endurance and stamina on the ground. Almost coming, for, coming for all the way from the hills, of course, that stamina plays a crucial role. But now with the mix of Daniel Gonzalez, who can be a defining figure, in the likes of Shillong Lajong and definitely Renan Polino de Souza. These two can introduce the Selecao flavor to what is more likely a very speedy approach to football. For Marvin and Sporting, though, we saw them in the last game. For them, it wasn't particularly a smooth sailing, but what we witnessed was that they don't really give up. I mean, even if they concede, they'll keep on chipping away at you until they find the back of the net. And that is the kind of mindset that we have always talked about very vehemently. And I believe this game will be another one to remember. Oh yes, we've already had so many great games in the I-League. <coughs> it's match number nine and the second match of the day. And we just saw a great win from Srinidhi Deccan. And Mohammedan Sporting would want to follow that up with a win of their own. Goals from Samuel and Gomez last time out. But not keeping a clean sheet. They would want to keep that today in Naihati Stadium. As we prepare for Shillong Lajong. Who are wearing white today to kick us off. Versus Mohammedan Sporting who are in their full black. There is another foreigner Karim Samb from Senegal who will be in the thick of the action. And there's also a certain Japanese, Takuto Miki, who will be leading the line for Shillong Lajong, in addition to the other foreigners that you mentioned, Rohit. So it should be a clash of the titans. As we kick off in Nahati Stadium, it's Mohammedan Sporting versus Shillong Lajong, who are finally back into the I-League. Can they take it by storm as they once did? We will find out over the next 90 minutes. Mohamedin Sporting put a ball into the box, but it's nicely dealt with to start off there by Daniel Gonzalez, the Brazilian. But now a chance for Mohamedin Sporting. Samuel, who scored the first goal of their campaign, almost trying to set up one of his players. And already there is a bit of a frenzy from Mohamedin Sporting as they try 
to get their first chance but possession has been given away there is a runner down the left and this is the first time we will see Muki in action in fact Miki I beg your pardon plays it inwards and Shilong Lajong trying to attack from the word go that's a decent ball in but will be claimed by Padam Chetri well, as we say, the dawn shows the day. Both the teams have started the game on a very feisty note. Marvel and Sporting had their say early on. Wherein now, Shillong Lajong also wants to have a bite at the cherry. And you were talking about the Japanese player called Takuto Miki. Well, whenever we have talked about Japanese players coming into the Indian mix, we will never forget the likes of the ever hard-working Siwoka. In fact, Ryuji Siwoka. And definitely the Japanese bomber, Katsumi Yusa, a sensational name in Indian football. Let's see if Takuto Miki can leave his mark as well. Of course, we have just started, but what a frenzied start to this battle. Shillong Lajong FC, they are a team that likes to build from the back. They rely on their high-pressing unit and most importantly on the overlap in the wings. A chance coming in their way, however... Padam Chetri will definitely not be faced by that, no matter the stature of Karim Sam. Now comfortably played back to their defenders and they will like to roll the ball as Shilong Lajong keeps on chasing the windmills. This could be a chance here. It is a drag back from Kasimov who likes to get his socks dirty and will get a yellow card early on in the game, which is quite an important time because he does like to make his challenges and very blatantly they're pulling back the likes of Damit Lingdo. Unnecessary perhaps from Kasimov, but you never know because it was opening up for a big chance for Shilong Lajong. But this will be very pivotal, Rohit, because I'd like to see how Kasimov can play the rest of the game without committing a foul. It's not going to be easy. Yes, he'll have to be very, very careful. He'll now have to walk on XL, something that we have not really seen Kasimov doing. I'm sure Bobby Lingdo must have had a word with his wards there. And it looks like it's going to be Renan Paulino de Souza who will be going forward with that free kick. He sent uh, Buam up front. Renan setting himself up for what can be a pile driver only if he can place it on target there comes the free kick rams it at the wall there comes a volley that was a menacing dipper padam chetri had a bit of questions raising in his mind but eventually it was not on target had it been on target shillong lajong could have been in a bit of in fact moment and sporting could have been in a bit of bother there oh yes definitely a big opportunity there for Shilong Lajong, but Mohammedan Sporting do have their back against the wall now. Miki does well, but Samad goes down. And again, just trying to play out from the back previously in the form of Padam Chetri. This was the foul once again, just a bit of a push, but Samad will take that free kick because it gives Mohammedan Sporting a bit of time to just be very composed. And Rohit, another thing I would like to point out is that when Mohammedan Sporting took on Aizol, they had quite a few former as all players who did score for Mohammedan Sporting and did impact the game, namely Samuel, as this ball is played through, and also Rem Sanga. Another foul against Samuel this time. Frankie Buam, who is starting for Shillong Lajong, is a former Mohammedan Sporting player and has performed really well for them in the I League, especially that campaign where they came second. So that may just come back to bite them today if the former Mohammedan sporting player Frankie Buam can get into a bit of form. It's a nice run here by Takuto Miki, but then the ball was miles away from him. Good interception there by Mohammedan sporting. But it looks like they have started on a slightly scrappy note. A bit of push and shove. Eventually allowing Mohammedan Sporting to get hold of the ball. And now they will definitely like to drive the ball all the way back to Padam Chetri. But the defenders are happy to keep it. Just trying to toy with Shillong Lajong. 
but it is a good start for Shillong Lajong and they will like to build on to that not really the best of passes there from Marmon and Sporting I mean uh, we are trying to be charitable here which won't be going down well with the likes of Andre Shernishov another big name in that uh, coaching lineup for Marmon and Sporting is their team manager Dipendu Biswas he's played football in the Bengal circuit in Indian football circuit for quite a while was one of the most prolific strikers in the Indian footballing arcade. Here's a chance for Mohamedan Sporting coming all the way from the left. There comes the cross opportunity. However, the goalkeeper stands tall and eventually palms it away. Bishal Lama doing a decent work. But this game has started off really well and the good thing to see is that Shillong Lajong, who are of course playing their first game, are up for the fight. There are a few challenges coming in. They're playing quite a good pressing line as well. As you see that interception taking place. Decent headers and decent balls won as well from the likes of Karim Sam. So, Marmalin Sporting, that's why on the back foot a bit. Because you would expect them to have a bit of a flow to their game. That's a good run through. But again, very well back. Very well won back there by Renan Polinio, who has impressed in the opening 7-8 minutes. And this is the first time we're seeing Shillong Lajong because they did have a bit of a break before really breaking any stride in that first round there are 13 teams so each round 12 will play and one will get a bit of a break and they were the ones that were allowed to watch everyone play so that could also be a bit of a benefit so they knew what to expect from Mohammedan Sporting Mohamed and Sporting now just trying to control the ball, which is very crucial for them. They like to play possessional football, particularly the kind of football that they play, where they usually prefer coming from the wings. In the last game, we saw how they were extremely active on the two wings, and they got their two goals from the right wing itself. Nicely done there by Remsanga. This can be a goal scoring chance. A bit of trouble there for Bishal Lama. He was beaten as he came out but decent piece of defensive work once again Rem Sangha teeing up what looks like Samuel Lalwan Puya however that cross wasn't exactly a glorious one great move again Samuel and Rem Sangha know each other so well having played fires all together and Prince almost getting there his off the ball movement is also really nice that's a good ball from Mickey Decent delivery as well. I think that did come off Samad and it will be a Shillong Lajong corner. Very involved in the opening few minutes, Kareem Samb, as Andre Chernyshov would have liked to get that early goal, but it wasn't meant to be. They did score early on versus Aizol within the first seven minutes, but now they have a corner to defend of Shillong Lajongs in the form of Hardy Nongri, the skipper. Once again, the stands at Naihati. Dreaming to the rafters. Uh, there comes the corner opportunity. Miles away will definitely be a statement going wrong. It was close. It's just that the angle was a bit too acute for him to try and convert that. Yeah, there was a decent delivery towards the second post. And a good save for Padam Chetri, who just had to stay there. But sometimes it's easier said than done. Time for the second corner now in quick succession. Allen puts it in. Padam Chetri does really well. It was quite high and he had to get that right. And then he launches it quickly. But Shillong Lajong doing really well to keep the pressure on. There's a chance for a shot, but it was always going to be closed down. Here is Mickey. Plays it backwards. And there's a certain fluidity about Shillong Lajong, which is a good sign for them. Again, Padam Chetri comes. Oh, has that bounce outside the box. He keeps it on the line. Remember, the whole ball has to cross the whole of the line. This will give us a closer look. Yes, it was fine. It's inside the box. Well, the second touch somewhat allowed Padam Chetri to gain his composure. That first grasp was definitely questionable. 
that was bobbling off his thighs there and when you're trying to control the ball with your thighs it's never really easy and it looks like Padam Chetri already is having a busy day in the office Mohamedan Sporting can now drive forward they've got the ball back they have a bit of space as they sent the ball forward unfortunately a very lackluster a very haywire pass from Kasimov he was uh, the crux of the Mohamedan Sporting attacking unit in the last game and once again these fans waiting with the bated breath that when will their team get the first goal so is this man as well and Rishon Shov but it looks like Shilong Lajong is going to be a tough contender to beat oh yes they've started off really well as we take a look at the players who have lined up for Mohamedan Sporting Kasimov plays it backwards a nice ball into the midfield good hold up play there from the likes of Prince who is one of those complete strikers that we have seen decent ball through by Hardy in fact it's a very good ball and then another one straight through the center Samad will watch it out but every time Shilong Rajong are moving forward Rohit they do seem to be having that creativity that speed that flair and they are going to be a team to watch out for this season absolutely they started their campaign late didn't have a game in the first week of the tournament but now that they are here they are here to announce their arrival in style they may not have found the opening yet Samad Ali Malik into the action this can be a chance for Mohamed and Sporting to take a shot they do take one takes a deflection and goes out for corner and it looks like both the teams have the intention of gifting us a very ferocious brand of football. Well, yes, this should be an encounter that we will enjoy. Samuel with the shot from a distance, nicely blocked away by Daniel Gonzalez. Alexis will step up to take it. He is very good at set pieces as well. Takes it short, should get it back. Needs to put it into the area now with his left foot. Not the best of balls, but they should get another corner to try and do it all again. And something Rohit that you would feel should be taking place is a ball into the box. You've got the likes of Prince up there. You have Joseph as well. There they are. Why not just give them something to head? Very rightly pointed out, Leon. Uh, Liam. Apologies. What eventually is uh, the point of a towering striker or a towering defender is to get these headers in. If you remember the 2010 World Cup semi-final between Germany and Spain, how Carlos Puyol kind of powered that ball in the back of the net. That is the long ball that we were talking about. That has to come in more frequently so that the precision can also hone itself. And now coming all the way from the left, here's a chance for Mohamed in Sporting. Takes a shot but straight. Uh, to the likes of Bishal Lama who throws himself to the ground and comfortably collects it these two names uh, Liam to be honest will be the ones to watch out for one is definitely the likes of Remsanga who has been instrumental on the right wing since the last game the other being Samuel Lalmuan Puya while another Lajong FC player and it looks like it's Abdul Abdul Karim Sam who's the Senegalese marksman who's been taken down with a hit to his rib ideally if, I mean he's the one who's quite tall and it looks like he took one to his ribs from Kasimov a bit of MMA as well I don't think there was much in it of course Kasimov is very smart with these kind of fouls but it has been spotted by the ref Anandrana and referees also do watch games so they will know what the likes of Kasimov are capable of. Hardy puts that ball into the area. Prince does not head it where he would have liked, but Padam Chetri lays it off now for Kasimov, who has to turn backwards and does so well to get himself out of a spot of bother. And now goes back into the spot of bother, but sets it off into the midfield for Angu, who also had a good game versus Aizol now a bit of space opening up on the left but it's not used here is Alexis plays it backwards and a bit of the ball for Mohammed in Sporting which is always good for them here's a chance to cross 
but well defended once again as I think that was Zoding Liana trying to move it forward. I think uh, one of the reasons why this game has been an absolute crackerjack of an encounter is because both the teams have a very explosive midfield. Marvin and Sporting has controlled the midfield in fine proportions as well. And Sho has Shillong, and Shillong Lajong. And now a free kick as Samuel was brought down. It looks like the referee is definitely not happy once again. Yeah, he clearly was swept off his feet by the captain, Hardy Cliff. It's Hardy Cliff with a bit of a hard clip on Samuel, his second foul. So he's also got to watch out. Something tells me that we might see quite a few free kicks and cards and fouls today. Another opportunity now for Northern Sporting to maybe even shoot from a distance. Alexis Gomez stands over it. Andre Chernyshov knows what he wants from his players during this set piece. Let's see if the Argentine will take a shot at goal. It's quite far away. Alexis takes a decent shot. Very good hit in fact. But it's just that it wasn't on the goal frame. Absolutely, it was a phenomenal enterprise there. Had it been on target, that could have probed Bishal Lama for sure. Unfortunately, he couldn't really get it exactly where he wanted to strike. But that shot will definitely do a world of good to his confidence for today. Alexis is someone who can never be kept out of play. Someone who's absolutely instrumental. And... Uh, He's someone whom we will definitely not keep him out of action. Marvin and Sporting cantering from the left, but very good interception there from Shillong Lajong. And now they will have a chance of their own to try and break from the right. Unfortunately, the ball has cleared the defined fences. And Adi Chernyshov always has something to say just a bit of a quick clap to try and motivate his players and mob and sporting who did not start off too well have now finally found a bit of flow as they move the ball along nicely Kasim off to Ango who's looking for a move down the right Remsanga Miki does well to track him we we'll need to do that quite a bit this season rather this game here is Zoding Liana, who also spent a bit of time at Shillong Lajong in the beginning of his career. So, a bit of a homecoming for him as well, in terms of clubs, that is. A pretty feisty exchange between the two teams once again, a look. Here at how Luang wanted to control that. Unfortunately, couldn't. Samad Ali Malik tries to send a cross into the mix, however, comfortably headed away. However, the possession still remains alive. There comes a very feeble effort from Mohammedan Sporting. And now, Shillong Lajong will have a say up theirs. And a foul happening right in front of the referee's nose. The referee not hesitant to lay down the law. Samuel taking another shot and then also committing a foul. As we take a look at Bobby Lingdo, Nong Bet. That's a bit of a mistouch. And then a ball straight to Andrei Chernyshov, whose touch was quite nice. And Samuel shooting from those areas is always something that you've got to watch out for as a defender and as a goalkeeper as well he did score from that sort of a range in the first game and has a bullet of a right foot without too much of a backlift that is his strength here he is on the ball playing it backwards as 20 minutes has passed in what has been quite a good game so far and you just get the feeling that it's only on second gear as Morgan Sporting try to move forward again but a very good interception yeah, I'm being honest, if this is just the second year of the game, I will really like to witness the fifth. And what I'm afraid about is, 
Will we have our voices when we go back home today? <laughs> yeah, that is always something that will come into play. That's a decent ball in. Prince has a chance to hold it off. Will stay with Mohammed in Sporting. The pass was on for Prince there, but Alexis did not go for it. And now the away side can move it forward. Nice little touch. And a good piece of movement again from Shillong Lajong. But that is a battle to watch out for. Joseph versus Karim Sam. Both of them will not let each other breathe. Once again, they go up against each other. Joseph should get there first. Karim puts a bit of pressure in him. And this time it won. It is won by the Ghanaian. I think the likes of Karim Sam and Takucho Miki has been pretty involved in the game. However, we haven't really seen the sights of Renan Paulino and uh, Daniel Gonzalez uh, trying to get too indulged. I think they are happy manning the midfield right now. Another particular aspect of this game has been how both the teams have played those passes very accurately. That's a crucial part of any footballing match, or any football match rather. That's a nice ball, Prince trying to set off and advancing Samuel, however, was denied. Here's Kasimov running through a couple of challenges, loses out and now cannot make a foul because he is on a yellow card. He knows that and he doesn't have to as Mickey will take it forward. A bit of space opening up for Shilong Lajong on the right hand side, but it was not used. And this is good from them, just keeping possession. Very important that when you're traveling and when you're playing a side who is at home, you give them certain times where they don't have too much of the ball. That is a challenge from behind and that is what happens when you keep possession. You force challenges like this from Angu. It's all about how confident you are to keep the ball at your feet because at times keeping the ball for a longer period also invokes more players from the opposition trying to crowd you out. However, this time Angu, knowing the fact that help was arriving for Shillong, Lajong had to do something. And what he did was exactly not as precise as his team would have wanted. Once again, another failure to control the ball from Daniel Gonzalez. I think, considering the kind of Brazilian flair that we have seen in action, the Brazilian defenders that we have seen. Here's another long ball. Prince there doing the needful, keeping the ball away from the Marauder in pursuit. Now, Ramsanga just turning into a bit of traffic. I don't think that has gone out, even though Andre Chernyshov still has his hand up. It will go down now that his team has possession again. A bit of that Brazilian flair that you were asking for with a bit of a turn there from Daniel. Maybe he's listening to you, Rohit. Well, when you talk about the Brazilian defenders, believe me, the big names in the sport, they haven't been or, or they haven't really shown too much flair. It has been more about old school, no nonsense defending. There comes the cross. Opportunity, Takuti. In fact, uh, Takuto could have actually steered the ball home from almost point blank range. Unfortunately, his extended reach wasn't enough. Now you were speaking about no nonsense defending, and that was a bit of a mishap from Joseph missing that one. And sometimes, when you expect the defender to get it and you miss it, then you also break stride a bit. Samad puts a good ball in. It will be kept alive by Alexis, but again, well defended by Shillong Lajong. But what a chance that was for Takuto. That is nicely done. Now Shilong Lajong tried to move it forward. Hardy plays it towards the right hand side. And Adinga gets the touch away. But Shilong Lajong will keep moving it forward. That is kept in. A wonderful aspect of uh, Shilong Lajong's game has been the short passes that they have played. They've kind of thrived on the short passes. They have not been incoherent. They just ensured the fact that they have orchestrated the moves in a pretty nice fashion. Because when you create the short passes and they are accurate enough, 
that is wonderfully done once again. Again, those lateral passes coming in handy. Slightly heavy touch there from Takuto Miki. Allowing Mohamedan Sporting try and drive from the left, but a decent challenge. Then we can hear the crowd getting involved now. Asking maybe for a foul or so. They love their football in these parts, of course. There is Joseph, who was involved as the ball came in from Allen. Joseph missing it completely. And that is why Takuto did not really know what was coming. And then very well dealt with by, I think it was Adinga on that far side. And Joseph will breathe easy after that. Here comes Samad. Looks for a ball in again. Prince is there. It was always going to be an acute angle. But he's getting a lot more involved in this game. Is the big number nine for Mohammed in Sporting. That was a lovely ball all right. But I think uh, the likes of Vishal Lama, that is probably the second time he's been slightly sloppy on the outing. It was a it was a guilt-edged opportunity indeed for Mohammed in Sporting to get their noses ahead in the game. That's a foul. The referee quickly blowing the whistle. And uh, Remsanga making a meal out of it. And Vishal Nishov extremely animated. A bit in the mood of a, a bit of salsa as well, if we say that, if we interpret that. <laughs> but to be honest, he is a tactical giant on the sidelines. No questions about that. Oh, definitely. And that's why he's always got something to say to his players. Small things during a game that will help them go a long way. Here is Kasimov. Options on the left. Wants a runner, doesn't need it because he has... A couple of passes, Angu plays it wide towards Alexis, who uses the decoy, plays it towards Angu, that's a good one too. But how about that for reading the game from a defensive point of view? And Shilong Lajong have done just that so far. And this is turning out to be another tactical battle, Rohit. Just like the first game we saw between Sridhi Deccan and Intakashi. I think that is the beauty of I League. That's a nice long ball, wonderfully received. Can be a chance here for Kareem. However, once again, Padam Chetri getting into the act. He's kind of shocked that the flag didn't go up. But I think that run was time to perfection there. And you're talking about tactical battles, Niam. I think that's the beauty of I-League. It kind of tells you that how the players are setting themselves up for even bigger stages. And the football has always been phenomenal in I-League. I mean, whether it was back in the 2007s or whether it's in the 2023s, football has always been a notch higher than most of the leagues in India right now. Then what is happening nowadays, Rohit, is if a player has signed for an Indian Super League club and is not getting too much of game time, then he comes to the I-League and gets a run out. So most of the Indian players who are playing in the I-League are definitely worthy of playing in the Indian Super League. A lot of them come down on loan or have had stints in the ISL previously as Prince gets a free kick and of course the foreigners are very good as they have always been in this particular league over the years as the fans are enjoying themselves here at Nahati Stadium. If only they could get a goal to accompany that cup of tea that they are enjoying in the stands. I'm waiting uh, if Mohammed and Sporting, when they get their first goal, this crowd will be an exploding volcano, emitting sparks altogether. But right now as well, there's been no shot of interest amongst themselves. And that tells you the love for football that Bengal always has come forward with. That's a wonderful piece of run by the captain, Samad Ali Malik. And now he sends it to the far right. Rem Sangha looking for some support there. Twist and turns. Does excellently well to keep the ball away from the opposite captain. And now chips it forward. Not really clearly taken defensive manoeuvre there. Eventually going in favour of Shilong Lajong. I think that was slightly tender, isn't it? And Kasimov will definitely say the same. We'll take another look at it. Not much in it from him and you can see 
Lingdo on that occasion just going down a little too easily. What they're trying to do, perhaps here Shillong Lajong, is go down slightly easier against Kasimov because he has received a yellow card. So that is the probably their point of view. But great work down that right hand side again from Remsanga, who has been superb whenever called upon. He had two players against him, but made sure to keep possession and then hold it for Mohammedan Sporting. Long ball now from the visitors. Nicely dealt with by Zoding Liana, but it comes forward again. Opening up nicely here, but another loose touch, which has been a bit of an issue for Shillong Lajong in the last few minutes. Mohamedan Sporting now has a bit of space going forward and now they drive slightly heavy touch there, allowing Shillong Lajong to regain their composure. Eventually before the referee blows the whistle and gets it out of play. It is uh, Renan Paulino who is down, clutching onto his waist. Well in for Mohamedan Sporting as well, Detol Moirangtem needs some treatment. Yeah, let's take another look at it. Kasimov, got to be careful. Might have got a touch on the ball. In fact, he did not and he is really walking a thin line. Luckily, there wasn't much contact from him on Renan Polino. But it's been a good start for Shilong Rajong. Bobby Lingdo Nongbet will be quite happy with the way his side has started. The fans, on the other hand, also will be looking forward to the next hour or so of football at Nahati Stadium as they flock in to watch their beloved Mohammedan Sporting. And there you can see a bit of tactics discussed by Bobby Lingdo as well. Thirty-two minutes of intense action so far. I think the referee Anand Rana assists having a quick word with his assistants before he drops the ball there. Alan Campo was on the ball for a while ago and now it's been back to their Brazilian. Alan Campa. Another experienced name in the Indian footballing circuit. That's decent work from Karim Samb. Oh, that is wonderful. In fact, he takes not one but three defenders for a turn. One of them included the likes of Kasimov himself. I think that tells you volumes about his finish as well. Being very honest, ideally you won't really see much flair and finish coming from the African players. But when you see them, alongside the brute force and power that they bring to the platter, it is a treat for the eyes. Oh, definitely it is. As you see Allen with an opportunity to cross, plays it into the path of one of the Shillong Lajong players. And now it is sprayed backwards by Renan Paulinho, who does like to hold on to possession rather than go for the creative pass. Here they come again. There was a bit of a touch on it. Karim cannot get a finesse touch this time round. It was cleared by Joseph. But Lajong will rebuild. Here is Allen, who's at the heart of quite a few of the attacks. Good setup there. But Kasimov in the right place at the right time. As Mohammedan Sporting can now move it forward. Nice touch from Prince. And I think Samuel was aiming it towards the other side. But it stays in play. Taking their time now, Mohammedan Sporting, they've realized they've got the memo. They're trying to match Shillong Lajong's speed. Won't be a very good idea. So maybe slow things down slightly and then try to attack because ideally Shillong Lajong is a very fast team. So if you try and take them on what is their wheelhouse, it'll be kind of naive. Shillong Lajong trying to use the right wing to their advantage. Looking for space. Goes for that cross. Takes a deflection along the way and that is going to be a corner here for Shillong Lajong. Further troubles for Mohamed and Sporting. But this would be a great time for the visitors to try and get a goal. 10 minutes to play in this first half. 
options are plenty when it comes to aiming for someone in the area as they decide which route they will go for for this third corner with Alan Camper out there I think it's going to be the aerial route he'll be floating it he likes that in swinger of his and he's almost scored Olympicos in his earlier footballing history chance there the header not really on target from Kareem Sam but the danger is not yet over here's a chance goes for an acrobatic back volley but straight to Padam Chetri who's had a very hectic day in office it was a very good delivery there from Allen. Almost met by the likes of Kareem Sam. And as you said, an acrobatic attempt from the likes of Daniel Gonzalez. Foul spotted by the ref this time though. Against Remsanga, the seventh from Shilong Lajong as it's taken quickly. Renan Polilo with a couple of fouls. Again, you won't really see a Brazilian defender committing to too many fouls, but the Brazilian defenders that India has seen so far in action, the likes of Du at one point in time playing a crucial role, the likes of Douglas Silva. Of course, they're big names in Indian football. So yes, when they commit fouls, they are an absolute mean machine with no regard for caution. Here's Kasimov, does really well and should continue his run. Prince makes a run as well. Can Kasimov find one of his teammates? He'll have to turn back. And this is good stuff from... Oh, that is brilliant from Kasimov. Opens it up nicely, puts the ball in. And now a chance of a distance just over the top. And that is more like it from Mohamed than Sporting. Andres Chernyshov will love what he's seen from his two foreigners and it's safe to say so do the fans I think uh, it's taken a brush off of Vishal Lama's gloves before flying out I reckon there's a corner has been given but the fans has been absolutely excited sensational stuff there and Alexi is doing the honors of a phenomenal pile driver a corner has been given so yes I think Alexis will have another Shy yet glory as he sends in the corner into the traffic. It will be received by Remsanga onto the far right. Does well to elude the likes of Takuti Miko. In fact, Takuto Miki, apologies. And it'll eventually, once again, Andre Shonishov not really happy. But it was a great sight to see the fans explode. Believe me, had the ball gone into the back of the net. That explosion could have also spewed a few sparks onto the ground. Now we've seen Kasimov play that holding midfield role where he's broken up the play, played some short passes, long passes, but for the first time we saw him in a tight area up the pitch create something really special. And then it was almost followed by a cracking attempt from Alexis Gomez. But the Mohammedan Sporting fans will have to wait if they are to get an opening goal. In fact, they could be defending one here. Is Mickey doesn't really infect the play too much. Allen will have Mickey again, but Samad is doing a very good job of holding up the Japanese winger. And here is Prince, who does really well himself. And it almost falls into the path of Angu, who was making the run. plays amongst themselves now Mohamed and Sporting since all the way back to their defender to their towering defender Prince in fact uh, Joseph not Prince however the ball's fallen back for Shillong Lajong will take their time quickly wanted to send it forward there King Sai Lang but that's gone all the way back to Vishal Lama who's had a bit of a mixed bag day Kind of produced a couple of howlers while trying to come out, but then also redeemed himself with a couple of crucial saves for his team. 
does well to keep the ball in play. Now Mickey trying to get into the mix. Wonderfully kept. Talon Kampa once again from that left. Trying to beat the likes of Samad Ali Malik. However, the resultant pass has been poor and Momin and Sporting gets on the run once again. Yeah, good stuff by Momin and Sporting. Making sure Alim could not get that cross in. Not the best of balls for them. Sangha. And as this half comes to a close, we have four minutes to play. This could just set us up nicely for what will be an exciting second half, Rohit. We haven't seen too much of an explosion from either of the sides. More like they're just feeling each other out. Here is Prince. Falls to Samuel. Goes for the turn and gets taken down. And this is a good opportunity again to put something into the area for the black and white brigade. Absolutely. I mean, uh, we haven't really seen too much of twists and turns from both the sides. When it comes to goal, we haven't really seen the pyrotechnics in action. It's more of a squib than an explosion. But believe me, with the kind of firepower that these two teams house, they can bring an entire house down. Alexis uh, and Samwin, once again with uh, free kick responsibilities. Bishal Lamas, lightly under the cosh, maybe on a bit of tenter hooks as well. We'll have to get into the groove. And Rishonashov having a very keen eye on the proceedings. Samuel leaves it for Alexis. Not the best of deliveries, easy pickings for the defence. Samad now. Plays it wide to Alexis. That's a better ball from him. And Joseph looked like he was offside or maybe even starting off with a push. And that fizzles out again. But Alexis' deliveries haven't been the best today. Maybe he could leave it to Samuel for the next one. Let me have a quick question. With almost the first half coming to an end, and we still to witness that first goal. Do you think Mohamedan Sporting will be introducing David Hamar early on in the second half? Oh, I think that's a very potent option. As you see Takuto trying to hold off Samad who's done really well. And with the form that he has shown in the Calcutta Football League, David is definitely someone that Andrei Chernyshov will be looking at. Especially if they don't get a goal before the 60th minute. They've also got the likes of Sheikh Fayaz, Tonmai Ghosh as well. And definitely all eyes will be on Eddie Gabriel Hernandez, who can come on as a substitute later for Mohamedan Sporting Club. So of course they have some decent bench strength. Talking about Shillong Lajong's bench, the likes of Savim Tariang, the likes of Atlantis and Karmo who's seen quite a fair bit of the ball in the Indian circuit, will also play a crucial role in trying to shape up that second half for Shillong Lajong. Here is Samuel, has a pass towards Prince. Pivotal touch, but Mohamed in Sporting will still have it. Back towards Samuel, doesn't set up nicely for him. Alexis goes for the shot. And now another shot from a distance, but all of them not working for the home side. Eventually, it was Zoding Liana who took the final one. That should have been better, actually. Nicely tripped into the way. However, that defensive manoeuvre coming all the way from Ronnie Wilson proved to be crucial in fending off uh, Mohamedan Sporting's ingression just in the nick of half-time. And now Shillong Lajong tries to drive forward. This could have been a moment of negligence from Prince and would have eventually led, in fact, a moment of negligence from Joseph and not Prince. And it could have been catastrophic in terms of the game as Shillong Lajong was already knocking on the doors. Oh, yes. What a lapse of concentration there for Joseph. But a great challenge from him to win it back just as Frankie Buam was getting close to a goal against his former side. There is Kasimov with a bit of a touch and then Samuel slipped but luckily for him the whistle had gone earlier. Here come Shilong Lajong again. Takuto plays it through. This is a chance. Buam 
isn't able to turn that is good from Joseph and now Allen with a very good delivery in there's a bit of pressure on Mohamed and Sporting and that is goal number one for Shilong Lajong as they come back into the I League it's none other than the Japanese Takuto Miki who gets the lead for the visitors and the stroke of half time venturing into the opposition's gate into the opposition's den the Japanese has dropped a bomb that would work a thousand miles what a sensational half volley that was you've got to take look at this cross wonderfully set up poor work by the defenders took it on the side and what a strike from the one and only Takuto Miki talk about an Indian debut and you won't see a better one than that look at the celebrations trying to silence the opposition and no better way than to score a goal on a volley a brilliant strike from the Japanese attacker usually on the left hand side but with Allen overlapping Takuto had a bit of space not the best of clearances there from Detol he didn't get too much purchase on the header and now Mohammed and Sporting will have to just realign themselves in the half time break because they are trailing by a goal to nil and what a start for Shillong Lajong they've done everything perfectly defensively they have been solid and now attacking they have taken the chance that they've created and they lead versus Mohammedan Sporting we're in the final minute of the first half let's see if Mohammedan Sporting can try and restore parity or will they head to the tunnel first go back to the drawing board and then eventually Rechalk the plans. A crucial free kick just in the dying embers of the first half. It looks like a pretty decent position for Mohammedan to try and use this as a springboard. Yes, Samad was on the move trying to go for the ball and he was cleaned off. He was pushed while he was in the air. So here's another chance for Mohammedan Sporting to try and launch an attack. Kasimov on the ball and so is Joseph Adyei. Let's see if Kasimov can hammer home that equaliser. In fact, Samuel sends the ball into the mix, headed away by Shillong Lajong. Yeah, that was a final chance, perhaps for Mohammed in Sporting. Maybe one last go before half time. Alexis, good delivery in. It was past everyone, and the referee on that cue blows for half time in what has been an intriguing battle between Mohammed and Sporting who trail at the break by a goal to nil versus Shillong Lajong as we see that ball which was agonizingly close to Prince but Daniel Gonzalez just about did enough that would have been an absolute thunderbolt had it gone directly into the net however a chance for Prince to try and head it home from that close of a range could have also been utilized but definitely Shillong Lajong and Takuto Miki will be a very elated side they have played the first half perfectly no errors whatsoever despite a few chinks hither and yon that usually remains this may have been a near perfect half for Shillong Lajong ball possession wise Mohammedan club Mohammedan sporting club has a fair bit of it 55% nine shots out of which two were on target for the black brigade wherein for shillong lajong it was four shots and two of them on target one of them found the back of the net six fouls for mormon sporting nine of them for shillong lajong just that solitary yellow card for mormon sporting three corners for both the sides and one offside against mormon sporting talking about the shots from mormon sporting definitely alexis adinga prince and samuel shared a couple of shots each between them before remsanga tried his luck with that solitary hit of his and it came from quite a range just outside the box and on the other hand it's been a good show from Shillong Lajong just the four shots but they have made them count Renan Polinio with two Gonzalez with that acrobatic attempt 
and Taku Takuto Miki with the all important opener just before half time six fouls for Mohammed in Sporting three for Kasimov which got him that yellow card he's got to be careful Samuel and Ango with two and one each that's the fouls for uh, Shillong Lajong the likes of Damait Hardy Renan Polino committing couple of them each Allen Ronnie and Takuto had their fair shares of tackles however just one of them in the half that kind of settles the story for Shillong Lajong in terms of being offensive a pretty feisty half of football the score line may not exactly narrate the exact sequence of play moment and sporting had their fair chances of goal scoring opportunities unfortunately they didn't really gulp them down we'll quickly show you the highlights of how the first half happened a few smiles and it was shillong lajong who got us underway here at the naihati stadium the yellow card for kasimo happening on the move in fact he apologized as well but once the infringement has happened there's no going back that was a lovely bit of work there almost a goal scoring opportunity that was squandered away by prince and then that was a nice chested down chance alan camper sending in the ball this was a lovely chance for mickey to try and convert kareem had his shot as well unfortunately couldn't really convert and then it was samuel who tried to put a ball in for prince but it was well negotiated by ronnie wilson again another delivery which caused everything that mohammedan sporting will want to forget about not the best of headers out from detol who couldn't do much from there but could have played it wide and how about that for a finish from takuto miki the japanese striker who has given shillong lajong the lead and that is how it stands at half time at nahati stadium mohammedan sporting have some catching up to do if they are to overturn this one goal deficit that keeps shillong lajong in the advantage after the 45 don't go anywhere because second half action is just around the corner
Welcome back to second half action as Mohammed and Sporting are trailing by a goal to nil versus Shillong Lajong who scored just at the stroke of half time. A couple of changes already for Mohammed and Sporting as you can see as David Lal Lansanga who has been in great form comes on and he is joined by Sangol Sem Bikash Singh making way for both of them. Prince Opuko and and Samuel as well. I'm not sure why Samuel was taken off. He was playing quite well and has been good in the last couple of games. But for Shillong Lajong, as you can see, they are in high spirits. And David created a few chances in the last game, was unlucky not to score, would like to continue his form from what was a very good Calcutta Football League and the champions of the CFL more than sporting get us underway in the second half they need to come back from behind if they are to win their second game in a row as Shillong Lajong look for their first points in their first game of this I-League campaign and Rohit a couple of changes quickly made by Mohammedan Sporting especially David who we expected to come on especially now that they are trailing in case of David, we definitely expected him to come on, but we were not expecting to see Samuel Lalwan Puya to go out of the equation as well. So that kind of beats me, like you pointed out very quickly. And uh, incoming substitute Bikash Singh will like to have an imprint, an early imprint into the fixture. At the moment, uh, Shillong Lajong FC, they will like to cool things down, just keep the tempo under control. Gets a long throw into the mix. However, Mormon Sporting, they've dragged the ball back. This can be a goal scoring chance. There comes the shot. Unfortunately, drags it wide. I was kind of uh, very excited looking at the stature of it. Once again, Remsanga pulling off a pile driver. Unfortunately, not really hitting the bullseye. That's a good chance. Nice one two between Remsanga and Argo. Remsanga, not really known for shooting, mostly his crosses into the box. But showing that he can also do that, not being able to hit that first post. And it looked like for a second, Michal Lama was in a bit of a spot of bother. And as we take a look at the players on the field, unchanged for Shillong Lajong, two subs for Mohammedan Sporting, namely Bikash, who is on the ball right now. Plays it backwards this time. Kasimov to Alexis. There is a run from behind. That's a good ball in. But nicely defended there by Allen. Who has been superb attacking and defending. Hardy to Takuto. And then now finally Mohamed and Sporting will get the ball back. Here is Alexis again. Playing centrally now. That Samuel is not there. David looks like he is going to be leading the line as a striker. Here is another chance to cross. Mohamed and Sporting are building up the pressure. And now... In fact, we'll get the ball back again. Well, I think uh, the second half, the way Mormon Sporting has started, if they can keep that tempo up, Shillong Lajong will have some defending to do if they are to remain in this game. The lead that they have, that's kind of extremely slender. A one-goal lead, we say, is never safe. A foul here. As... Uh, Renan Paulino goes down. Yes, a bit of a turnaround. Eventually, not really a well-placed tackle by David Hamar. Yeah, and the change in formation for Mohammed in Sporting. Not really formation, but more of personnel. Samuel, who was marshalling that midfield, was taken off. And now Alexis, as this ball is played by Padam Chetri. Quite shakily, or this could be a chance. Is that onside? It looks like it is onside. And what a chance squandered there by Kareem Sam. He cannot believe his luck. He should have just smashed it. The flag did not go up. He went for the chip or the pass perhaps towards Mickey. But Padam Chetri was there and you can see he's looking to the heavens as he apologizes as well. Yeah, that was somewhere uh, in between for sure. I think uh, what 
Kareem wanted to do is just take a cross but then eventually realized midway through that crossing opportunity maybe that could have been a shot as well. So he blended both in the same breath. Unfortunately got nothing out of that. But what a guilt-edged opportunity for Shillong Lajong to try and double their cushion and had they got the ball and had they got the ball into the back of the net for a second time. That could have been game over almost. A bit of pressure on Padam Chetri as well. Didn't really collect the ball cleanly at the first go. Yeah, looks like it was a bit of a failed offside trap from the Mohammedan Sporting Defence. Ande Chernyshov will be breathing a sigh of relief. He's been in this position a few times when Mohammedan Sporting have been trailing. But he won't really mind too much as long as they can get the job done. And that's why he's been proactive to make those changes. We've seen quite a few of the coaches making changes and them working out. So it'll be interesting to see if that happens for Mohammedan Sporting. Here is Adinga. Plays it forward towards David. A bit of a suicidal ball there. Never was going to get it. That is another one. And Alexis can't make the most of it. That's a nice touch which opens it up very nicely now. For Shillong Lajong. Mickey up against Detol. With the delivery into the box, there's a bit too much on it. It will be running out of play eventually. Could not be kept in there by Frankie Buam, who's been quite quiet, even though he's playing against his former side. Well, the half will be slightly tricky for Shillong Lajong as well because. Knowing the fact that Mormon Sporting will be attacking, they'll have to weather some storm. But at the same time, what works out in their favour is Mormon in all likelihood will be committing to the numbers up front. And now they have a chance to break from the right. Remsanga trying to cut in sharply, looking around for some help. Eventually gets it. It's played towards the far left, nicely controlled. Tries to steer all the way in. Unfortunately, it looks like it won't be something significant enough for Bikash Singh. What a challenge there by Kong Sith. He knew that if Bikash went past, then he had a chance to cross it. And a perfectly timed tackle by the Shillong Lajong number six. Now Kasimov again looks for a pass. Can only find Alexis, who does quite well to play towards Bikash. Adinga to David, who is dropping quite deep. They don't have a target man as big as Prince now. So they will have to try and build. It looks like that was off David and that's the right call from the ref. I think a bit of tempers flaring in the Shillong Lajong camp as well. Slightly heated at the moment. Trying to take the ball forward now. Bikas Singh plays it down to that central channel. Wonderfully tackled there by Shillong Lajong FC. As uh, once again, this can be a chance for them for Abdu Karim. Plays it towards the far right. Tries to find a way into that central channel there, Buam. And uh, he's being challenged and eventually he's being divested of possession by Joseph Adier. Good work by him so far in the second half. And now eventually a ball sent forward. The flag has stayed down. Can be a opportunity for Marvel and Sporting. David Amar shoots it and finds the equaliser. What a sensational welcome to the I-League. It's his second appearance and his first goal. Look at the crowd. They are absolutely elated. What a moment in the Nati Stadium. David Hamar once again to the party for the Mohammedan Sporting side. 21 goals in the CFL. Add one more to the tally. That's an I-League goal for him as well. And just the brilliance of him shown once again. Made the run, still had a lot to do. Beat one defender, beat the second defender, then beat the goalkeeper as well. He is something special, is David. And he shows that time and again. A diamond that glistens like nothing. This is what makes i-league so special it scouts it plants the seeds of tomorrow david hamar has arrived at the big stage those glossy boots of his 
finding its mark. And believe me, this is just the beginning of what can be an incredible outing, an incredible outing in the upcoming days. And now Shillong Lajong, they will have everything to play for as well, not just defend. Now that the slender lead that they had has been wiped out. And this is where Mohamedan Sporting could do a bit of damage. Getting a goal quickly after that change and again credit credit is due to Andre Chernyshov. He made that change, brought in David and it worked. But just a question here Rohit. Yes, David does bring that X factor coming off the bench. But what does he have to do to start? Because he is someone that can take the game away from you at any time. I think right now what Andre is doing, I think that's the right strategy. Ideally when you have, now David is an out and out striker. So ideally what happens when you're bringing in an out and out striker, that to someone who's as young as David, who's got tremendous stamina and endurance. When you bring him out in that second half, well, uh, this can be another chance for Mormon Sporting. There comes the cross. David, so close yet so far. But the danger is still not over as Mormon keeps on knocking on the doors. It looks like they will try and cut back. It, cut back. It's the two substitutes, Vikas Singh and David Hamar, who's kind of bringing the roof down at Naihati right now. You can say that again, Rohit. And just as Mormon and Sporting are taking the game to the opposition it's time for a change by the looks of it for Shillong Lajong Lingdo will be coming off and the number 10 Sangti Xianlong will be coming on now quickly answering your question I think right now David Amar will be more potent coming on as a substitute because he will have fresh feet this is how the goal happened oh this is how the last chance happened Vikas Singh was once again at it sent in an impeccable delivery into the mix David was at the receiving end of it unfortunately I think the defender had a bit more bite of the cherry this time than David would have liked and now again at the moment David is good coming off the bench because he has time to first and foremost witness the defenders and then accordingly plan his line of attack and for a forward like him I think that time is crucial for him to also up his game but let's say around six seven games into the i league where he's garnered enough experience enough confidence i think that's the right time for him to start the game moment sporting on the move that is a sensational throw ball could have been trouble however it looks like it's the goalkeeper bikash lama who's pulled up a crucial save at the expense of his own shin well that is painful i think for bikash ramsanga is complaining i'm not too sure who went into him well, it's a lovely ball for Mango. It was Ramsanga. Oh yes, that is very painful. Kasimov did really well after Ango, before Ango got the ball. And you can see a bit of a clash there. Ramsanga, of course, getting hurt. But I think it was Bishal Lama who was more infected of the two. Yes, uh, he looks to be in tremendous agony. Ideally, a collision of shin bones isn't particularly a very pickwind situation. And uh, knowing the kind of challenge that we just witnessed when someone is just steaming in at you at full speed, it can be very, very challenging. So, but again, kudos to Bishal Lama, knowing the fact that he could be at the receiving end of an injury, he stood his ground and charged forward with all the intensity once again to be honest this is some high class football from both the sides i reckon it was david hamar actually is it no not really david hamar it was rem sanga who slammed into the shin bones of uh, bishal lama and it looks like he may have to be taken off I think that is going to be the case which may bring on Neto Shaliu into the mix. We just wish him a very speedy recovery and not something serious. Maybe he can just take some rest and receive the primary treatment and be alright. But these definitely aren't welcome scenes for Shilong Lajong. Oh yes. 
didn't think it would be that bad but it looks like it will be a chance for Nathor to come on and he has to be thrown straight into the thick of the action. You can see a lot of the Mohamedan sporting players just helping him onto the stretcher. Hopefully it's nothing too serious but this is quite sad for Bishal Lama as we take a look at the goals. This is how it all started off. A clearance went straight into the path of the Japanese striker Takuto Miki who got his first goal in the I-League and after that it was David coming on as a substitute going past one the other and then smashing it home in front of a packed Nahati Stadium who exploded in excitement. I'm kind of surprised when that goal came from David Hamar. I mean definitely with all the credits to him but someone as good as uh, the likes of the Brazilian and the likes of Shillong Lajong, Renan Paulino, in fact uh, apologies, Daniel Gonzalez, the way he got beaten that was extremely meek. Just that one outside dodge and he was taken off his balance. And now it's a test for Neto because at the moment Mormon Sporting is kind of breathing fire and with the goal in their favour they'll even be more primed to take those long ranges. Oh definitely especially as we see this really sad sight of Bishal Lama going off we wish him a speedy recovery especially when you've got a new keeper Neto who's just been thrown into the mix you've got 30 minutes You've got a new goalkeeper onto the pitch. You've just scored a goal. This is the chance for Mohamed in Sporting. They've got to defend this one though. I think it went out of play. And this is the time where they would love to get a second goal. Will the black and white brigade. This spell of play is going to be very, very important. Particularly the upcoming 15 minutes. As uh, Bishal Lama is still being shown he's visibly in too much pain but at the moment Mohamed and Sporting trying to erase and FS their pains trying to score David Hamar once again on the lookout but wonderfully defended there by Shillong Lajong and now Shillong Lajong can drive forward they can have an opportunity knocking on the doors this can be a shooting chance as well wonderfully steed up there comes the opportunity and miss from point blank range that should have been taken with arms wide open by Santi Shanglong. Unfortunately, he just couldn't keep it down enough. Oh, what a chance once again. This time to open up by Renan Polinio. Set it up beautifully, but don't count out that challenge which came from Joseph. He just put off Santi, who has just come on and mm -hmm. made him kind of think twice before taking that shot and enabled him to miss the target. But... An incredible chance for Shillong Lajong. That is a challenge which comes in from Alexis. He does get his socks dirty as well as he takes down Frankie Buam. And it's getting heated now. Is this as we see this challenge which comes in to take down Frankie? A goal is coming, Rohit. It's just a question of which team gets it first. And I think that is going to be crucial that which team, whichever team gets the first goal will definitely be the one to walk away out of this fixture with the bragging rights unless there is a late turnaround. At the moment though it's a free kick in favour of Shillong Lajong. They'll try and trip it at the far post and it eventually eludes everyone and goes out of play. Padam Chetri will have a sigh of reprieve here for both the sides every single time the ball has ventured into their opposition's box. The danger bells have started ringing louder than ever and it's getting and it's getting a lot more stentorian with every passing move as well. Here's a chance for Mormon Sporting to try and control it. Nicely done. Can they drive forward? David Hamar has dropped a lot deeper this time. Plays it towards the far left to Alexis. Alexis looking for the ball towards the right hand side. Remsanga is not patrolling down that right hand side at the moment. So it will be switched towards the left. Just shows how reliant they are on wing play. Ah, Mohammed in sporting. Taken down by the Bikash who has 
been positive so far. Hasn't got a chance in the attacking sense of things just yet. Here is Oding Liana who can't keep that within the line. And it will go out of play. And it looks like it will be a chance for a substitution for Mohamed in Sporting. And this is when Eddie Gabriel Hernandez Padilla from Honduras will come on. And he will take the place of Angusana Luang who has had another very good game. But Rohit, this is the change you were speaking about as well. Yeah, Hernandez is a very towering player. He's tall, he's well built. And most importantly, what he brings to the game is that lanky header. Ideally, when you are one all and you have already reached the 64th minute of the game, you would expect those long balls to come in from your defence. So you will need a marksman as good as the likes of Eddie Gabriel. While we were talking about him, he was on the chase. Given the fact that he's got gigantic strides, he can pull the form. And once again, a sensational bit of work there by Vikas Singh, who kind of used a lovely back flick. And that went through the legs of Shillong Lajong defender. There are two very good substitutions from Andrei Chernyshov. David and, of course, Vikas. Let's see if he can get three out of three. And if Eddie can also get involved here's Bikash again just got caught up there in the turf Eddie wins it back his first involvement will play it to Bikash who's on side the delivery is towards the second post this could be a chance but it's very well defended and that should be a foul as a challenge flew in there from Remsanga absolutely swiping out Daniel Gonzalez a good attempt there by Remsanga to try and get the ball into the back of the net. But uh, again, not really intentional. Went for the ball, both of them. Yeah, that was kind of a smoking challenge to take <laughs> Gonzalez off his feet. Gonzalez first landed. What I am worried about is... Gonzalez landed on his knee. That can be some crucial impact. Let's just hope after Bishal Lama has been taken off with an agonizing injury on his shin. No serious injury may have happened to, the, uh, to Gonzalez. He's back on his feet, which is a good sign eventually. And as things stand, this has been an encounter that has promised everything to us. Thrill, drama, some physical statues as well. Absolutely, Rohit. It has been a great game. Almost halfway through the second half. It's still anyone's game. Shillong Lajong are looking threatening whenever they, whenever they go forward. But it's the Mohammedan Sporting Storm that is lurking upon them and you just get the feeling that if they get another big chance they might just take it here is Vikash Eddie looks for the 1-2 doesn't really get it here's Remsanga he has been pushed doesn't get a foul a bit of space opening up here but Paulinho decides to keep it within that particular distance not the best of balls which has been played while wide and just coming back to that point Rohit I said that Andy Chernyshov has made a couple of good changes. We saw a few good changes in the previous games as well. Shridi Deccan doing the same, Yan Law doing the same the other day. And coincidentally, Yan Law was the one who brought David Zate into the mix at Aizol from the academy, brought him into the I League, gave him a few games. After that, David has done really well. And now, in Mohammed and Sporting, he's trying to get. He's already got one goal as they are trying to attack once again. So it's been quite the journey for David. Since you mentioned uh, Yan Cheng Law, he's someone who recognizes talent and he promotes youth. He himself is a very young coach. An opportunity. Danger still not over though. Marvel and Sporting can still come. There comes the shot. Takes a sharp deflection along the way. Or is it, uh, or has Kasimov shot it away straight? We'll have to take a look at this one. Eddie had a chance to try and bury it. In fact, that shot out itself. So it's going to be a goal, give, goal kick, in fact. And yes, you're talking about Yan Cheng Law. He himself is a very young manager. And alongside him, he also likes to promote youth. And that is something which Indian football now needs. Knowing the fact that there is a revolution coming and Igor Stimash is at the helm of it. We'll need someone 
who or will need a lot of coaches like Yan or maybe some young coaches who actually embraces the youth revolution, gets these young players into the mix and eventually show them the doorway to something massive. Oh yes, absolutely. And we've seen the benefits of that. This should go straight into the hands of Padam Chetri. And it was David Remsanga and Samuel who were all in that Aizol FC side. And now they are producing the goods for Mohammed in Sporting in this campaign so far. Remsanga, who has been involved in a couple of challenges so far, needs to be careful as well. But what Mohammed in Sporting have not done in the last few minutes is actually take a shot at Nietho, who's come on. So that is something that they will try to do. Another big name uh, in the Mohammedan sporting bench in terms of their technical personnel is that of Dipendu, is that of Dipendu Biswas. I mean, he's circled the Indian football circuit for a while and he was one of the most prolific scorers that Bengal ever produced. He's played for experienced teams, he's played for Mohan Bagan, he's played for Mohammedan sporting as well. So, knowing Dipendu Biswas, he's also someone who loves to embrace youth. And you talked about how Aizol brought them to the scene. And now this can be more than shot at bringing them to the bigger stage. And when that happens, that is going to be absolutely classic. Here's a chance for Mohamedan Sporting, unfortunately. A bit of slip there for Alexis, which will allow Shilong Lajong to try and retain possession and drive forward. And I see done by Miki. Plays it into the midfield. And it opens up again for Renan Perlino, who was trying to get past a couple. Hardy tries the same. But that midfield of Mohamedan Sporting operating quite nicely now. Again, a bit of space on the right hand side. It's Bikash who's gone there. Might cut inside on his left foot. Sets it up now for Emsanga, who went for the ball again. But all the possible avenues were blocked. Nicely done by Adinga. And taken forward again by David. Bikash. Good delivery in from him. It falls to David, who could not shoot. Here's Kasimov, who keeps going and has run into traffic. And now it will open up for the visitors. Shilong Lajong has been now defending for their lives. And now this can be their chance. Unfortunately, Mickey couldn't really control that. That goes out of play. He's apologizing straight away. But Samad Ali Malik. He's someone who will not wait for someone's apology. Once he gets the ball, he'll keep on driving and he'll keep on driving on all cylinders. But that's been nicely intercepted, sent forward. Once again, headed away. And it's going to be a throw in here in favour of Shilong Lajong. To be honest, Shilong Lajong's forwards have had a silent second half. Nothing as good as the ones that they produced in the first half. That was kind of very electric. And it looks like one of them have gone, has gone down. We'll need some treatment. I think that is what the referee, and that is why the referee has halted play. Looks like another change on the cards for Mohammed in Sporting. There is Dipendu Biswas, who you just mentioned. It looks like Tanmoy Ghosh will be thrown into the mix. Someone who can definitely get amongst the goals. Mohamedin Sporting will definitely want to get this three points as well. They've played well, but Shilong Lajong have been quite resilient today. They've put on a good show in their first matchup. And they're definitely going to try and not only take a point home from here, but maybe even take all three. A long throw coming in for Shillong Lajong. It was Alan Camper with the throw. And uh, they are desperate to try and get the ball into the mix. It looks like uh, a bit of unhappiness there from Joseph Adier, which will eventually allow. In fact, a big change coming up for Marvin Sporting. Tonmoy Ghosh, a very gifted midfielder, will be replacing the big name of Alexis Nahuel Gomez. Alexis was sensational in the first game. But today has not really left an impact 
Tonmoy is someone whom Mohamed and Sporting will be hoping can deliver the goods for them. They also have the likes of... Uh, they will also be taking on or they'll be hoping that the likes of Sikh Fayaz comes into the mix as well. Here's a chance for Shillong Lajong, a long cross coming in. But eventually, Padam Shetri will have things under control and they've just given it away too cheaply. But then rested the possession back as well. Tonmai Ghosh has just arrived into the mix, into action. And now a pass on to the far right from Kasimov. That's a nice ball tripped in. David trying to latch on to it. It looks like a bit of confusion there. <laughs> and eventually well done. Because ideally after that confusion, your initial instinct kicks in. And that's your defensive instinct. Where you try and clear the lines. But they kept their calm. Knew that the final touch came of a moment sporting player. And eventually shielded until the ball went out of play. Yeah, almost 15 minutes now to go in this encounter. Andre Chernyshov had to do it the hard way versus Aizol. That was also a 2-1 victory. This one is 1-1. One, one. one more goal could be the difference. Here's Frankie Buam who goes down. Chance for a shot. It sets up quite nicely. But then it has been blocked by Detol. And it should be a corner here for Shillong Lajong. Tries to keep it under control. A bit of a push there. Uh, once again, to be honest, every single time Abdul Karim Samb has actually knocked on the doors. He may not have found the back of the net, yes. But he's created significant opportunities. This will be another chance for him to try and hit something. Let's see if, uh, once again, Palmer can get something in. In fact, it's Camper, not Palmer. Apologies. He's just waiting right now. And look at the crowd at the moment. They are in a lull for a while. Because they know that their team is an under significant threat. Considering the likes of Alec Ka Alan Camper. Could have been a crucial corner. It was nicely floated into the mix. Danger still not over though. Shillong Lajong keeps on knocking on the doors. And now they would like to use that left flank. Tries to cut back in. There comes the cross and the header drags it agonizingly wide. It's so much happening at the Naihati Stadium. And the moment in sporting people are living on the edge. Wonderfully done down that left hand side from Santi. And again, as you mentioned earlier, Rohit, Karim Sam always getting involved. This time the header slightly wide. But there wasn't too much of purchase on it because of the delivery that has been kept in by Bikash. Or oh, in fact, the flag went up on the far side, which was spotted slightly late by the ref. Throw taken, it's given away. Tanmoy had a chance. Now the challenge comes in. It's a fair one according to the ref. But an aimless pass straight towards Detol, who can set it free for Ramsanga. Kasimov has a runner do towards the right. Ramsanga again towards David. Poor pass from Ramsanga, but Kasimov will get it again. Tanmoy with a bit of a loose touch and then it goes into the <coughs> orbit. Joseph should get that quite easily. All the way back now to the goalkeeper. Decent work, to be honest, so far. By both the team's defence, they, they have been standing tall. In the face of incessant attacks from the opposition, Mohammed and Spurring particularly have been a lot more dominant in the second half. Sends a ball forward, not really headed down in decent manner. Time for Shillong Lajong to try and regroup. They goes for a long ball. It eventually eludes everyone and goes all the way back to the goalkeeper. Risky stuff there by Padam Chetri. But now it falls kindly towards Ramsanga. David with the turn. Looks for the ball in. But the run wasn't made. Bikash can get there. Bikash almost sets it up. And now Mohamed and Sporting will have to look for another avenue. But they are trying to dig deep here. Kasimov 
David with a bit of a loose touch. He has Ramsanga back towards Kasimov. This is patient stuff from Mohammedan Sporting. Can they break this resilient Shillong Lajong defense? Not with balls like that. Headed away again. And given away, in fact. That should have been better than that. You're playing around in this 80th minute and you're giving the ball away. Here comes the Japanese, Mickey, trying to cut back in. That's a lovely ball. Could have been a goal scoring chance. But then blocked right in the nick of time. An opportune tackle there from Mormon and Sporting. And now they try and drive forward from the right, looking for some help. Turns around, plays it back to Kasimov. Kasimov using the central channel, looking for a few more numbers alongside him. Now steers it further. However, Shillong Lajong puts in a timely challenge. Tonmoy back to Kasimov. Kasimov desperately trying to control the ball. Does decent again. Back to Tonmoy. Looking around for more numbers. Vikas. Plays it towards the far right. Zoding Liana. However, excellently done by Shillong Lajong. A great challenge there by Kin Sai Lang Kongsit. Who has come over to Shillong Lajong from Kenkre. A couple of seasons with them in the I League, and of course, is from Shillong, so local boy coming back once his side are in the I League. Here's a chance again, a bit of a challenge there from Joseph up against Karim, but no foul, says the referee. I think that was the right decision. Now, Kasimov plays it wide. There is a bit of an openness to this game, David. Lots of space for him. Also quite a few tired legs at the end of this one. But again, a lovely tackle from Kongsit who has really been good today. And it looks like someone has stayed down on the other end of the pitch. So the ref will stop it. A couple of substitutions uh, happening here for Shillong Lajong. It looks like Shano will be introduced into the mix. A very prolific, a very prolific sharpshooter, Guam will be making out, and at the same time, Kian Yel. In fact, Kian Sal, not Kian Yel. Apologies, Kian Sal would be entering the yard. We'll take you a quick look at the goal of uh, Mickey there. Look at that side volley. Wonderfully thumped into the back of the net. He's had a crucial bit of time in the game today always had his eyes on the ball and uh, this is not the first time we are seeing the Japanese in action for people who have witnessed the likes of uh, Katsumi Yusa must have known that they are a very tough breed of footballers to have in your side And the Mohammedan Sporting Faithful have a lot of faith in their side. They will be hoping for a bit of late drama here. Maybe a late goal in Nahati. What a season it has been for them already. Winning the Calcutta Football League. Of course, Shillong Lajong also has lifted the Shillong Premier League four times over their history. Also won the Meghalaya State League back in 2019. So that was a big achievement. Back to the action though. Tan Moy has played it straight towards Eddie Hernandez who's disappointed so far. Hasn't really been too involved. Hasn't got too many chances. Here's a chance though. Trying to create an opportunity. Nicely received. And now Mohamedan Sporting. They can break free as well. Kasimov. Looking around, scouting for options. A nice forward ball, David Hamar at the receiving end of it. But Shillong Lajong does exceptionally well to try and take the ball away. But they've given it. Kasimov on the ball. Took an early yellow card, but the way he's come back, that's brilliant. This can be a chance for Mohamed in Sporting. A slightly heavy third touch there. Allow Shillong Lajong to regroup themselves. But then Mohamed in Sporting are back in the hunt. A great flow to this game, even towards the end of it, even though we can see a few tired legs, the substitutes, of course, will help. And I completely agree, Rohit, that initial yellow card for Kasimov 
we thought would have changed his game. We were thinking how he can manage without making challenges. But on the ball, he has been superb. There's the ball towards Hernandez. That's a bit of a clash of heads. And I think both of them will stay down. Hernandez and Ronnie Wilson. And those ones are always tough to shake off. I think what usually defines a player like Kasimov is uh, the kind of class that he brings into the game. Because it eventually, again, because when you are playing or introducing someone like Kasimov into the mix, you know that he has the ability to turn around. Mohamedan will be introducing Sheikh Fayaz into the mix as well. <clears throat> Started off his career for Mohan Bagan and was absolutely brilliant in that season. Every time he'll take a run from that right wing, he was almost unstoppable. Of course, he had his earlier stints in Indian football before Mohan Bagan actually threw him to the limelight. But with all said and done, this is once again, we'll take a look. Eddie. And instead of the ball, he headed into the play. That can be really painful. Yes, two of the heads coming together. Ideally, when you're taking a challenge like this, it can be very tricky for you. It's good to see that he's back on his feet after a head collision. Remsanga will be coming out and will eventually be making way for Sheikh Fayaz, an experienced Monica who is being sent out to pray on Shilong Lajong's slightly shaky defence at the moment. A great change to have at your disposal, Sheikh Fayaz knows exactly how to cut through defences, how to put those balls into the box. Like Ramsanga, who gets a much deserved break. Great game from him. As always, what an addition he has been to the side. There have been some great signings, I have to say, from Mohammedan Sporting this season. Padam Chetri, one of them, plays that through. Tanmoy does well to get a throw off Shano. In fact, I think it's been driven the other way by the ref. You said about uh, Sheikh Fayaz cutting through the defences. Believe me, he cuts them like a hot knife through butter. Or let's say a knife through hot butter, maybe. I have just lost my flow of words after seeing what has just unfurled ahead of us. <laughs> An exciting spell of play. Now that is wonderfully again received by David Hamar, who drives through the central channel. This can be an opportunity for Eddie. The possession remains, is it? No, the flag's gone up. So Eddie will have to hold on to his horses for the time being. Yeah, you could see Eddie was trying to bend his run as much as possible. David just has a bit of a word with him. He started off and before he could come back, oh, there was, there was a man in the distance there. But the flag did go up. And I do understand your excitement, Rohit. It has been another incredible day of football in the I-League. A double header. This one, of course, closely, closely contested as compared to the first one. Srinidhi Deccan running rampage on Intakashi. And we have more action for you tomorrow, day after, and almost every day in the I-League. In what should be a memorable season, as that is a foul from David Zate, who hasn't had too many options or opportunities after that goal of his. Ideally, he's someone who loves to latch on to chances. It's as simple as that. You give him chances, I mean, you give him chances, he'll score. But again, you try and ask him to create one. Of course, I'm not saying that he won't, but what I'm trying to say is maybe and just maybe for him, scoring is a lot more easier than to create and score. But the goal that he scored, I mean, of course, Vikas had a crucial part to play in that. But beating those two defenders first and then going for that shot, I think there was a lot of creation in that as well. Shillong Lajong now just trying to keep the ball away from their own half. Morbid and Sporting looking slightly more dangerous. And it looks like Kasimov has won that cleanly. Not really the best of long passes. They've given the ball away to Shillong Lajong, who very easily concedes possession. Don Moy into the mix. Now plays it to Sheikh Fayaz who does his bit of trickery on the left wing. 
This is fabulous shape holding from Mormon in Sporting and the shot that comes in was extremely emaciated from Zoding Liana. A good piece of play after a while from Mormon in Sporting. Zoding Liana's cross just could not have the bend on it like he would have liked. And just adding to your point there, Rohit, what David Zati did really well was start off the left, cut in and score. But after that, most of the time he's got the ball has been centrally. So that has been a bit of an issue for him where he has to drop deep, try and turn on a couple of defenders. That's not really his game. As we move closer towards the 90th minute, Joseph tries to get the ball away. He falls and it is a free kick conceded by Hardy who has played really well. The Shillong Lajong captain just holding off Joseph for a second and he had to make that challenge and he is quite an experienced player has played for Shillong Lajong since 2016 and now has come back into the mix and six minutes to take us through this matchup six minutes to pen history six minutes to forge a drama written better than the stories of Alfred Hitchcock and six minutes to witness enthralling Indian football. Marvin and Sporting on the drive. Shillong Lajong somewhat stuck. I think they have went into perennial reverse gear here. They are barely able to break free. Marvin and Sporting coming all the way from the right. Keeps the ball at their feet. Looking around for scoring chance. Their captain sends in a looping cross that goes straight down the throat of Neto who collects it and goes down. Yeah, Neto has done quite well since coming on. As I said, hasn't been asked to make any saves as such. Launches that one long as the one minute has been played off the six. Here comes Shilong Lajong again. Tanmo is at a good job in that midfield. Does usually play slightly higher up the pitch but is doing really well here. Once again, Mohamedan Sporting trying to use the left wing ever since the introduction of Sekh Fayaz, who's always a very proficient on that wing. Tonmoy Ghosh has also been a very crucial figure. There comes another cross. The danger could have lurked around on the horizon. Had the rebound fell at Mohamedan Sporting's feet. This can be a chance for Karim Sam, who's being almost muscled out of possession. We are talking a lot about Marvin and Sporting, but one particular name that should be taken over and over again has been jo uh, Joseph Adier. He's played a crucial role in the defence in the second half. And to be honest, had it not been for Joseph for this couple of crucial defensive blocks that he threw at Shillong Lajong, things could have been entirely different. Big chance here for Marvin and Sporting. David could have shot. Another option for Tanmoy. Kasimov again just going through the defence. Another ball has been played in. That will be easy. And it looks like a stretcher is being called very quickly by the referee. Doesn't want to waste any more time. Looks like it's a bit of a cramp there for Renan Paulinho. And Kasimov getting involved. Feeling like there was a bit of a clip on him. It's getting slightly heated. Brilliant stuff from him. He did get a foul there. Went past quite a few. That was a challenge. And considering the fact that David could not get a shot off, maybe the free kick should have been blown. And that's exactly what Kasimov was asking for. Frustrating for Andy Chernyshev. But for Shilong Lajong Rohit, it has been a good comeback into the I-League. They've had a decent record in the past. In 2016-17, they finished 5th of 10th. In 17-18, they finished 6th of 10th. Then, however, got relegated in 18-19. But this year, they're coming back and they look like they have a side that can definitely, if not challenge for the top, at least finish in the mid-table once again. You know, back in the 2010s and 2012s and 13s, early 2010s, if we say, when the Goan teams and the likes of Mohan Bagan and East Bengal used to wreak havoc in the I-League, Shillong Lajong used to be one of those giant killers and it was not easy to cross them. They were always uh, keeping their opposition on the toes. So it was heartbreaking to see them getting relegated. But once again, they are a side that doesn't really take the fall easy. You know, we say that no matter how many times you fall, what matters is 
the extra time that you get back up. That is what Shillong Lajong is. They never give up. They fight. And you will love to see it happening over and over again. But Morbidan Sporting, what a brilliant second half of football they've had. They realised that they were not really at their phenomenal best in the first half. Then they came out emoting, wearing their heart on the sleeves and eventually has done a sensational bit of work there. Yeah, I think it's been a great matchup from both sides. Hernandez hasn't really got into the mix too much. But it could be a fact that 1-1 might be the correct scoreline. Of course, Morbidan Sporting could have got a couple of chances. Shilong Lajong also <coughs> could have scored. But by the looks of it, it will be a well-earned point if it stays like this. Especially for Shilong Lajong because it is their first game and it's also visiting Anahati Stadium which has been very well flocked by Mohammedan Sporting supporters. Coming in the home of the Black and White Brigade, Shillong Lajong will definitely be happy to steal a point. In fact, more than a steal, it will feel like a larceny in broad daylight. And now Mohammedan Sporting comes knocking on the doors. This can very well be their last throw of the dice. They want to make it count. They are slowly going forward. Tonmoy on the ball. Zoding Liana screaming on the left. Plays it to the extreme left in fact. Before it could reach Vikas Singh. That was cleared away. Zoding Liana back on the ball. Sends in a cross. Headed away to safety by Shillong Lajong. And it looks like Mormon and Sporting will still have a say. Zoding Liana desperate to lay it down into the path of... Vikas Singh, who still stays in the mix, there comes the cross, but straight into the safe hands of Neto Shaliu. He's proven to be absolutely unbeatable ever since he's come on. Yeah, Vikas Singh needed to take a look at the run of Kasimov. He was empty and that's why Kasimov gave, gave him a bit of a mouthful. That should be that. And they've only had one meeting between them, these two teams, back in 2014. What a game that was as well. Shillong Lajong won by five goals to four with the Cornell Glenn hat trick back in 2014. But now it looks like again Mohammedan Sporting just cannot get the better of Shillong Lajong. Here they come again. Probably the last chance if it is kept in. Yes, it is by David. The last throw of the dice for sure for Mohammedan Sporting. Into the 97th minute we go. And they will keep coming. A chance for a final cross. It is a delivery. David once again has to set it up for someone to shoot. Kasimov leaves it. The shot comes in. What a strike that was from Zoding Liana. But Nato has been superb. And he will take that ball to bed if he has to. We talk about uh, baptism by fire. Neto has been subjected to that. And he will come out unscattered. What a game he's had. What a game we have had. Eventually, that will draw the curtains of an absolutely electrifying encounter. Morbidan Sporting and Shillong Lajong share the spoils of a well fought war that spanned out for 96 minutes sensational stuff it was shillong lajong who drew first blood through the likes of the day of their personal japanese bomber takucho miki but morbidan sporting introduced young blood into the mix it was david hama who hammered away that equalizer drawing things level at the naihati bunkim anjali stadium what a great game we have witnessed once again here at Nehati. In the first game of the campaign, Mohamedan Sporting managed to get past Aizol, but this time Shillong Lajong proving resilient enough to hold them to the point. Let's take a look at the stats. 58% possession, percent possession to Mohamedan Sporting. 16 shots for them, 9 for Shillong Lajong. 5 on target for the Black and White Brigade. 3 for the Reds who are wearing white today. <coughs> 12 fouls to Mohamedan Sporting, 11 to Shillong Lajong. It was quite a physical encounter, but just the one yellow card to Kasimov. As we take a look at the shots, 16 of them from the home side. Three from Alexis, who was under the par today, mostly playing in the midfield. Atinga, Hernandez, Prince, Remsanga and Samuel 
with two each and Bikash with one and it was David as well who got the elusive shot on goal and scored. Here's a closer look at uh, Shillong Lajong shots. Karim Sam had three of them, couldn't find the back of the net. Renan Paulino took a couple of them just from outside the box. Santi had come very close to scoring. Gonzalves had one. And the most important one from Takuto Miki firing home from the side volley. A look at the 12 fouls committed by Mohamedan Sporting. Three of them coming from Kasimov who had a booking as well for one of them. David Hamar, sensational stuff, also played a crucial role in the defence. Samuel played another crucial role, committing a couple of fouls. Angu, Alexis, Hernandez and Adie had one foul each. Here's a look at the fouls committed by Shillong Lajong. 11 of them, Hardy committing 3. Jamait with a couple of them, Renan Paulino with a couple of them, Alan, Ronnie and Shano, Ronnie, Shano and Takuto had one each. The close proximity of the numbers will tell you how close of a contest this has been. Anything could hardly separate the sides and it's all fair that we finish things on level pegging at the Naihati Stadium. We'll quickly try and show you the highlights of what has been an absolute lip-smacking swashbuckler. This is when the bo when both the sides walked out to the center. It was Shillong Lajong who got us underway. And the first foul that landed the booking for Kasimov. And uh, something that kind of made him very cautious as well. And uh, this is how the chance came in from which Shillong Lajong got the opener through Takuto Miki who hammered home from a vicious side volley. Sensational stuff and hitting the bullseye from that close of a range and a stunning, stunning celebration. That ended the first half, but the second half on, but the moment the second half began, Marvel and Sporting was on song. This was the first shot that could have found the bullseye. Unfortunately, it didn't. This was a glorious chance for Ibrahim, or in fact for Sam, Karim Sam, apologies. And then it was David Zate who came into the mix, the super sub striking his 22nd goal of the season, including his CFL goals. He was superb coming on from the bench against Aizol and nothing changed as he got the equaliser today as well. There were a couple of chances for Shillong Lajong to try and snatch all three points. Sankti did well to come on. He set up a couple of chances, but they were also missed. And then... Quite a few changes were introduced by Mohammed in Sporting as well, but it just did not work out for them. Kasimov was superb today, but he was also could not create anything substantial, and it ended with all the points and all the goals square, one apiece at Nayahati Stadium in what has been a thrilling day of I League football. That is all from us here at Naihati Stadium. It's Rohit Ganguly along with myself, Liam Bain, signing off as Mohammedan Sporting and Shillong Lajong share the spoils with one point each. Thank you for watching and join us again tomorrow for more I-League action.